Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Hai Bo from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, why your army apps are dangerous and how we uh, provide a solution to uh, uh, sorting privacy leakage. So this is a joint work uh, between Shanghai Jiao Tong University and the University of Texas at Dallas. Um, I would wish my student Jin could present the talk, but uh, he had already graduated and uh, was not able to come for family reason. Um, first, I will show you that modern smartphones using uh, provide IME apps to improve the experience of user phone interaction. So currently, third-party IME apps are progressively used, just like a survey uh, done by Winnie. Uh, Winnie. So um, this can be evidenced by thousands of such IME apps available for download in um, major markets like Google Play. So actually several such army apps have been installed hundreds of millions of times. A report from China IT Research Center also indicated that uh, at least 68% of smartphones in China using third part army apps. So actually army apps is actually one of the most dangerous apps. The reason is that it can touch all your input before passing the input to other client apps. So it is essentially a key log, right? Um, actually, you might have ignored that uh, the warning generated by Android, which uh, says that an army app may be able to collect all the text you tap, including the password and the credit card number. Even worse, an army app not, not only see the input a user taps, but also may collect and send this input out to the cloud through a live work. There are actually good reason why an army app has a cloud server to store and transfer users' input. First, it may be lead to generate personal dictionaries such that the dictionary could be used across device. Second, many AMI apps usually have functionalities called the cloud input, by which the cloud server using its uh, massive data to improve user speed or the accuracy. So the many AMI apps, especially those provided by mesh search engine like Google and Baidu, have a feature called the search mediation. So it inter intercepts user's input and returns some search results back to the user. So uh, actually this threat is real. One of the base uh, uh, third-party Android mobile keyboard, which is called SwiftKey, is shown to be turned into a key log. Very interesting is that uh, recently the Japanese government wants its employers not using Baidu ME app due to being suspicious of uh, spying on user. A very famous hacking site, uh, Wuyun, also disclosed a version of the famous IME app, Sogo, which has been downloaded hundreds of millions of times, um, may lead to leakage of large number of user sensitive information. So an intuitive approach would be using um, some analysis tool like tenant tracking to detect and stop leaking of user sensitive information. However, while such approach is shown to be effective in many user scenarios, there are still several issues in preventing it from being using effective for third party army apps. First, there are plenty of close Closed uh, sourced um, native binary code, including some unknown proprietary protocols and uh, code. And also, some code uh, uh, are encrypted, and the encryption key is unknown. Actually, we analyzed that uh, the uh, AMI app I just mentioned, the Sogo AMI app, contains around 1.4 megabyte binary code. And uh, it, it mainly uses the binary code to implement its main functionalities. And uh, compa compared to the binary code size, the binary code size uh, is only around 2.5 megabytes. It should be noted that the binary code size is much more compact than the um, binary code size. 
Also, um, AMI apps tend to use a lot of table lookup operations, which are sh uh, shown to be difficult to handle for some analysis, uh, dynamic analysis tools. Finally, it's hard to define a policy for which data is sensitive. So uh, one strong solution is stopping using third-party AMI apps and switch back to the most simple or this default AMI apps that can be verified not to leak in user's input. However, this policy poor user experience and people still love third-party AMI apps. As I just mentioned before, more than uh, 680 smartphones users in China want to use third-party AMI apps. So we need to find a solution that can balance the usability and the privacy. So our goal um, is to mitigate leaking sensitive information while preserving usability and thus embarrassing, embarrassing both privacy and usability. To this end, we provide an on-demand oblivious sandboxing approach for AMI apps. Due to the fact that AMI apps contains a lot of battery code and may actually transfer user's input, we instead treat the AMI app as a black box. In this way, we treat each input session as a transaction. And uh, if the input session is found to be sensitive, we just roll back the AMI app apps. So this essentially makes the AMI app forgot what it is saw. Uh, we show that um, iBox works for Android supports unmodified AMI apps have a negligible overhead and little impact on user experience. In the rest of the talk, I will force for the detail the threats posed by AMI apps. So the first uh, threat is that even if the AMI apps are benign, there still could be privacy leakage in the cloud side. The first uh, reason is that a curious or malicious cloud operator may seriously steal users' input data in cloud. Actually, there are multiple accidents shown before. And the second threat is that there are currently no strong guarantees on the security of user data in cloud. This can be found by uh, lots of uh, privacy statement and the user agreement from major cloud operators. To confirm the leakage of users' keystroke, we also perform a gray box analysis by using a man-in-the-middle package analysis. We found that a very popular uh, AMI app, TouchPair, which has been installed more than 44 million times using a HTTP POST with users' key code as argument in plain text to a cloud server. As shown in the package ob obtained using Wireshark, we can see that your social security number may even be sent out in plain text to the cloud server. This means that you can easily intercept the level collection in order to steal users' privacy data. We focus to confirm that it is very easy to repackage an AMI app as a keylog. The finger shows that the overall architecture of AMI in Android the Implement Service Manager uh, service is responsible for invoking AMI apps. Then each AMI app is collected with its client app, such as Twitter or Facebook app, using an object called Input Collection. So uh, we show that it's very easy to repackage AMI apps in a very straightforward way. So the approach is to simply capture the text committed by the function base input collection. And we demonstrated this by recap repackaging Baidu AMI app and collect uh, all users input uh, in plain text. To prevent AMI app from leaking all users input, we use iBox to perform on-demand oblivious sandboxing. So iBox is comprised of a kernel module, a demo in the application framework, as well as a policy engine. The iBox controls AMI's state and is in the action with the external world to protect users' secrets. Accordingly, we need to assume that 
uh, the application framework and the operating system kernel as well as the client app as trustworthy. Notice that we are not aiming at a completely stopping leakage and we may leak some partial le uh, prefix. In the following slides, I will use a running example to show you how iBox works. After the uh, client app invoke uh, on army app before user's input, iBox first takes a snapshot of the current army app state. Then, user will start to input something. Let, let's assume that a user wants to type her input lambda is user sec 2015 to share the Wi-Fi password to her friends. So during the input, the AMI app analyzes the touch by user and get the first character called the I. And the iBox will record this character as well in its transaction contents. At the same time, the AMI app may send each input character to the cloud server to improve user uh, input speed and user experience. After the user input three characters, iBox then found that the first three characters may be a prefix of a sensitive uh, word called uh, is user sec 2015 and thus may lead to potential information leakage. Hence, iBox will then conduct on on-demand isolation by blocking the network input as well as other means like IPC. Hence, users can still con continue to do the input, but the AMI apps cannot uh, leak the information at this moment. After the user finishes the input session, as this input session is deemed to be sensitive, iBox will first uh, commit all the input to the client app. So in this way, the client app is able to get all the input from the user. Then iBox will perform a rollback of the state of the AMI app in this way, any input stored and transferred by the AMI app can be erased, just like the AMI app never see the user's in input. And also iBox restores the network and IPC collections. Finally, the AMI app can process the lax input session without iBox uh, isolation. So while this seems intuitive, there are still several challenges, including how to determine which input session is sensitive, how to inhibit AMI's app from leading, leaking sensitive information, and how to perform network checkpoint and rollback. iBox determines whether sensor session is sensitive using two ways. The first one is through context-based policy. If an input context is sensitive, iBox will treat the session as sensitive as well. So this can be done by determining the type of the third part client apps. For example, if the AMI apps is interacting with a bank application, when you are in, uh, in, uh, typing some uh, bank account and password, so all the session will be treated as sensitive. And uh, if uh, an input text block is for send to input some sensitive uh, data like a password, actually Android provides some means to identify the type of the text block, like whether it's a in password or email address. And the uh, iBox will treat this session as input as, uh, as sensitive as, as well. Um, for other types of input, iBox using pre-specified policies using prefix matching the reason is that uh, since there is no oracle to predict what a user will type lacks, and we cannot do post-mortem analysis, otherwise the input uh, may have already been known by uh, and leaked by the AMI app. The first issue of prefix matching policy is how to represent the policy. And the input got by iBox could be multiple language. It could be English, be Chinese, be Japanese. So iBox using UTF-8 to represent the tri translated keystroke in a twice-like structure to represent the policy. It also separates global and poor application policies by using different try structures. To determine whether an uh, input session is sensitive, iBox using a term called acceptable disclosure rate. For example, with the uh, accepted discussion rate as 0 0.2, 
these three characters ISU will be trigger a sensitive input session for SUC SAC 2015. IBOX can use in the default policy only uh, when uh, they are, uh, can use, it can use default sensitive files like contacts or cookies to generate a default global try structure. Alternatively, user may specify sensitive data using either full text or regular expressions. And uh, IBOX will query the uh, policy using a state machine by maintaining the input state so this is uh, used to defend some attacks like a prefix substitution attack. For example, the AMI app may fake some keystrokes like backspace delete or space to f f confuse the uh, iBox. So during each keystroke, iBox will query the policy and update the input state. Once iBox determine if an uh, input session is sensitive, iBox need to isolate the IME app from leaking input. As an IM, a malicious IME app may actually send, store, and transfer users' input, maybe like directly send out the input through an encrypted collection, or transfer store input into other apps, or to send it later, or even store users' input in a third-party app or service. So. Um, iBox uh, solves this problem by restricting IME's behavior once it's determined to be sensitive. By the disabling network collection, restricting IPC and the Rosberg IME apps to a clean state. However, checkpointing and rolling back a complex IME is not easy due to lots of states across apps, framework, and the kernel and lots of suitor a complex local state, and it's very hard to derive a consistent state. We observe that an IME app is essentially an event-driven application, so it's passively receive user's input and react accordingly. So it should be mostly consistent once there's no user input. So we using an approach uh, called quiescence point to do the checkpoint and rollback. To uh, determine a quiescence point, iBox examines the states like a pending networking state and IPCs as well as some internal state. And a malicious IME app may not cooperate with iBox. In this case, iBox can skip to do the checkpoint if it is tried several times. Actually, this could be also be an evidence that these IME apps could be malicious. So uh, the reason iBox can skip to the checkpoint is that the checkpoint in iBox is mainly used for restore and rollback uh, or discarding uh, entirely. So it's kind of using only checkpoint uh, to do the restore as well. To do the checkpoint, we uh, need to checkpoint the memory state, the file state, the model threading, and the IPC states. You'll find the details in the paper. We have conducted a set of evaluation to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of iBox. We evaluated iBox using a set of popular IME apps uh, from a large third party market. We first evaluated the checkpoint and rollback latency of iBox. We showed that the time to do a checkpoint is less than 103 milliseconds. Actually, the world record of texting is uh, around 163 milliseconds per character. So this means that iBox uh, would cause low uh, delay during the input. We use three approaches to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, iBox from isolating IME apps. The first one is using black box testing by observing the package sent by testing the IME app during our input session, we observe that a much less number of packages to be sent out using iBox. This suggests that iBox may have stopped the certain package from being sent out. The second approach is using Grabbox analysis of the touch pair keyboard application, which I showed before that it may send out user sensitive uh, data out in plain text. Our grab box testing suggests that there is no social security number being sent out under iBoxes as protection. 
Finally, we using the repackaged Baidu IME app for white box testing. We found that iBox completely stopped leaking top secrets like password using context-based policy and only leaking uh, a prefix using prefix matching policy. We also conducted other evaluations like power consumption and user experience studies. Our power consumption study shows that there's very little difference during a 30 minutes usage uh, with or without iBox. This is probably because iBox, intro though iBox introduced additional operations, it also reduced the power hungry networking operations. The users, uh, for the user experience study, we had no complaint ab about the latency issues, but we do uh, uh, receive two complaints. The first one is that the user now lead to using uh, manually tap their account instead of using automation. The second one is that the user needs to specify their personal secrets manually, but we believe this is worthwhile for improve their privacy. iBox is related to prior work on privacy leakage detection, prevention, as well as checkpoint and rollback and sandboxing. Currently, iBox is just a very first step towards this direction, and uh, there are still several limitations, including it may be vulnerable to side channel attacks and some colluding attacks, and also some attacks uh, to the Android permission system, and it currently cannot handle worse input. In summary, so the, uh, in this talk, I showed, I show you the, I showed you that third-party IME apps is fun but very dangerous. We made a, a first systematic study on the insecurity of IME apps and described IME box with the goal of embracing usability and privacy. So this is uh, my talk, and uh, I I'd like to take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, great work. Uh, I'm Alfred Chen from University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can see this can work pretty great if um, in the context of the app, the ME app is um, like communicating is kind of uh, easy to find to be uh, sensitive or not. But there are, do have some certain cases that may be hard to find. So mm -hmm. for example, um, like browser. So I type something in the URL bars, uh -huh. then you may not know it's sensitive or not until I finish. To make it worse, um, some uh, many of the what I guess uh, um, all of the browsers have the uh, auto complete um, those kind of functionality. So even if you find sensitive app, you complete them. So those kind of uh, partial strings is still kind of um, can be captured by the ME app. I think. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, great question. Um, I, I think like for the uh, broader case. Um, even if like the the, you know, the users tap some information in the screen, so iBox can still get all the input uh, uh, from the uh, user to the browser. So it can use in the prefix matching policy to determine whether the input uh, string is uh, sensitive or not. So in this way, it, it may leak some like uh, prefix of the right. sensitive data. And uh, regarding the automation uh, features of the browser itself, I'm not quite familiar with it, but uh, I guess that if the automation feature is enabled by the browser itself, it cannot be observed by the iBox as well as the IME app. So the IME app has no way to get the uh, automated uh, t input as well. Um, so, so, the, so, so how about the autocomplete for the IME app itself? For the IME app itself, but right? So you make contact to the cloud server and trying to auto complete so some of the, right. the, the English words you are trying to do. Yeah, but in this way, if, if you already found that the, the prefix uh, is uh, uh, sensitive, uh, you already stop the network connection to the cloud. So you have right, no way. Right, but, but first, there are some, some partial uh, leakage there. So second is that if you stop in the very early age, so, the, so it may um, so break the autocomplete functionality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is kind of uh, like a trade-off trade between the privacy and also like the user experience. If you set the like, acceptable disclosure rate to a very low value, you, 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 there's very little chance for automation. Sure, sure. thanks. Okay, thank you.
Hi, Grady Clark, uh, Rutgers University. Thanks. Two things. Uh, I didn't know that there was a world record for texting, so that's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. And the second one is, did you, so the users can choose their own prefix when they're uh, entering sensitive information, right? Mm -hmm. So did you do any analysis on the types of prefixes that they chose? Did they ever just choose something like tilde before the character string or exclamation mark? I'm a bit curious about that. Uh, could you, could you like say, uh, repeat the first one? So what were you just about so, testing, right? You're right, right. So what prefixes do users choose when they enter sensitive information? Oh, okay. So this is kind of like, uh, like, uh, yeah, we, we need a more, uh, so currently like they, they just like choosing uh, three or four characters like that. We don't have a, a com very comparative uh, study on this case right now. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. So how do you difficult do you think it will be in practice for normal users to define these lists of, of private data, particularly when you have, if you want to protect data that might be in a, a larger field, like a, the body of an email. Right. Um, um, I think like the, so you you can um, even if you have like a larger value of email, you you, you actually you have separated within the words, right? So you you can like uh, define the pol uh, 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 policies using uh, your word based, right? So you you have like you uh, have a password like is this use sec 2015. So you define a prop prefix like is ISU. This is the prefix. Um, okay. <laughs> right, I, I guess it seems difficult in general to try to capture beforehand all of these sensitive things. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's right. Because this is kind of, uh, because it, it, it's very difficult uh, for users as well, because uh, they may not aware of uh, some particular words are sensitive or not. Uh, right. And the, the sensitive is kind of uh, very objective uh, uh, definition. Because in this, in this uh, today they may think this is not sensitive, and t tomorrow they think it's sensitive. Yeah, so this is uh, currently our issue, right? Thank you. Thank you.